What's up everyone? Colby Cheese here. Looks like we are back in a video that you haven't seen in a while. This is a commentary of a League of Legends match. And let me just make sure the sound options are good because I uh, have actually recently reinstalled. So this will be really loud if I do not change some of this stuff. I have changed everything to colorblind mode so you guys should uh, be able to see this if you can't see colors very well. Yeah, good stuff. Alright. Been a long time since I've done a League of Legends commentary or even played League, but you know I've been thinking I can do some commentaries of League. I do enjoy it. I do enjoy making some commentaries. So I'll bring you guys one of these. And I see some of these names that I actually do remember. This is a pretty high ELO match. I'm I'm spectating this as a uh, it's a solo queue match. Between some pretty good dudes. You got Super Nintendo Dex here, Scuba Chris, all these people. I've actually met some of these people in person, actually. A lot of changes in the game since I've actually played it, as far as the graphics are concerned. It's kind of interesting to see in the last four months how many changes that they've actually made. They've done some stuff where you can see the timing on silences and stuff like that. A lot of little small things that you may not even be thinking about now if you've been playing the game a lot but I can definitely tell a big difference just from the time that I took a break from the game previously so we've got ourselves Jungle Lee Sin here nothing really new there that's always been extremely popular and uh, I may not know the exact buffs and nerfs over the last couple of patches but I'll be able to keep up with those as I start to uh, check out some more of this and get going and whatnot. Hmm, Nasus in the jungle. I don't know if I've seen that in a really long time. I don't know if that's a new thing or if this is just something he's checking out. That is a cool little skin. I have not seen that one. Is that is that new? I have not. I don't remember seeing the little dragon on her. They've definitely come out with some pretty cool skins so far. Already lots of harass coming in. Using that passive. Oriana doing lots of auto attack damage. Even at level 1, already pushing down her lane. So... That's already going to be a lot of trouble. She's going to have to be careful. But obviously at level 1, that's really not as much damage as it appears. You may get him to half health, but one health potion is going to kind of heal that back up without too much issue. Misfortune down here. Going to go ahead and put lots of pressure with the help of Janna. She puts that shit on there. That on top of all of her abilities is just going to mash down the HP quite a lot. So they're going to have to play the long range poke game, but oh my god, already Dodo 8 looks like he was about to hit the sack. That was going to be a first blood if he had not uh, gotten away. It only needed one more auto attack for that to happen. So he had to back off, go ahead and be back to the home base, and see if he can get back before he loses too much experience here. You don't want Misfortune to get too far ahead. She can become a pretty big powerhouse in the late game. Well, powerhouse early game, but if she gets that early game advantage, then that's going to be a big problem. This is going to be an early dive already. Level 3 NASA is coming from the jungle in here, and that's going to be a kill as well. They are trading that one. Uh, she was deciding to take a lot of damage from the turret and did take an ignite as well. Dodo 8 is back and a half to 1v2 here, and let's see if that's even going to be possible. He's going to do his best to try and pick up some of these creeps. Hopefully... Uh, Scuba Chris is not going to force him to get too aggressive at this point. Yeah, good thing he is backing off. That would have been way too much CS to lose early on, especially after having uh, been forced to go back. Let's jump back and see what happened in this middle fight here. We've got Oriana about half HP, and so she's going to be a little bit uh, brave. Oh, that was a nice catch there with that damage, though. It's just too much, and there's the Ignite. Just enough damage to take her down. Mar Dynasty falls, and closing the case just barely gets out of there with his life. Haven't checked top yet, but uh, we've got we've got some interesting Lulu action going on up top, and that's against the new Quinn champion that I have actually not personally played yet. But he has a really interesting move set using Valor in order to uh, do some cool switching up. So I'm excited to see how this works out in the top lane since I'm not extremely familiar with the Quinn play. So far he seems to be doing a good job of shoving her back to the lane. I'm not sure how Lulu's gonna fare in this one. I don't know. I haven't seen a lot of solo Lulu uh, too much actually. Generally just seeing her as the support. 
Bottom lane seems to be having the most action so far, but we do have jungle hanging out here in the middle. Jungle versus jungle in the mid action. They're just both trying to hold that down while their mid lanes get back. And there's a little bit of action using that uh, hop to you and hop back spell that Quinn has. Just kind of poking every time he gets a chance. Let's see, what is he maxing out here actually? Going for that blinding assault first. Lots of ping in here. We gotta have a gank. Scuba Chris coming down to the bottom lane and does land a great Q, but just a flash right after he comes in is able to allow Itakyo to get away. So that was a great gank by him. It was just also a great escape. Luckily having those flashes to get out of there, but that is going to allow Red Team to push that lane in. Luckily we have Jakur coming in. He's going to hold that lane as much as he can. He doesn't want them to get free hits onto that tower, so great timing on him coming down to the bottom lane. Let's take a look back into the middle and see what we can find out. Are we going to have more pressure coming in? Oriana now a level ahead just a little bit. As we can see, she is pushing her back to the turret. Lots of poke coming in. Mar Dynasty with a little bit late on that shield. Aerodactyl is feeling the pressure as well. On the top lane, he is getting shoved in hard. Nintendo Dude X trying to get as much damage on that turret as possible. Let's see if he can get that taken out. And he might even do some interesting roam tactics. But I'm not sure if he's going to be trying to go for massive amounts of farm and come in late game. That is the interesting thing about top lane. You can try and take your turret quickly and then make pressure on the rest of the game. Or you can sit there and farm and try and be a late game powerhouse. So lots of interesting options with the top lane. And I haven't actually seen any great ganks on the top. And that's normally where a lot of ganks will take place. But so far that has been mostly focused on the bottom from what I can tell. As well as covering for the middle after lots of engages happened. Lots of action here. We have jungle fight going on here. Jakur stealing some small wolves. Not going to be a big deal. Scuba Chris wants to uh, get him. Oh, what? Stop that. <laughs> Automatic camera trying to make me lose sight of what's going on here. Jakar gets out. He's got the slow. That's going to make it easy for him to make his escape. He's just going to hang out here and go back to base. So far, we've got lots of people kind of just doing their go back and buy items situation. Not too much pressure on bottom. Now we're looking at a little bit of just farm, farm, farm at this point. A little bit of poking coming in here. Dodo 8 trying to get some damage on a misfortune, but she's going to be putting lots of pressure down. And that was a great job flashing out of there, using that as a bait for Scuba Chris to come in here and try and get a kill. They aren't able to get their time. Oh my god, the bouncing! Itakio picks that kill up. Luckily, just hitting perfect timing on that attack in order to pick up the kill. That was not expected at all. And look at this. Super Nintendo X coming in here like a lightning bolt. Super fast in his little bird form using Valor. But he does go down. Taking so much damage from that Oriana. Or not, sorry. Not from Oriana, but from... Uh, wow, I can't even remember her name. And Jakur is going to get out just before that. Oh, wow. He actually uses ultimate. I don't know if that last tick of Ignite would have killed him or not. But he did use that ultimate just to make sure that he did not fall in that situation. Alrighty, here we go. I don't know why I couldn't think of the name of Lux. That's uh, that's kind of the brain fart. Like I said, it's been a while, and I'm gonna have those brain farts. So we got teleport coming in. He wants to get back here. So we did see that roam that I was talking about earlier, and he's using that teleport to get back and continue farming. He doesn't want to lose his turret. Oh my God, we got a kill on bottom. Let's go ahead and jump back and find that one here. Takio full health, just going to run out doing big damage. Does he? All right, let's see. He's turning level 6. That's what I was thinking it was going to happen. He's going to turn level 6. It's probably going to get him a little bit low and then pop his ultimate. And that's going to be just enough damage to take her out. There was no way she can actually escape from that. She was stuck right there in that corner. So it was a great job on the timing for that level 6 ultimate coming in. Dodo 8 does have his ulti as well, but it's not going to be near as scary, especially with that shield up there. Takio going to be trying to put as much pressure as possible and shove out Miss Fortune, or sorry, not Miss Fortune, but Caitlyn out of the lane. Caitlyn doing her best to use that range to her advantage, but she's going to have to be careful. If a gank comes around, that's going to be bad. However, we do have Scuba Chris kind of hanging out and looking for a uh, time to jump in here and pick up a kill on the Takio if there is a dive. Uh, there definitely is the potential for a dive. There's the Q miss. Not going to help him out too much. He's going to come in here and just put some pressure, make sure they don't do the dive, and that's going to be good to go. 
We have Dark Zephyr coming back, now back in the lane. So let's move up to the top and see how they're doing here. Nintendo Dax seems to be uh, unable to pressure Aerodactyl back to the tower. Now that Aerodactyl has a few levels, his auto attacks are going to be just a little bit stronger. Doran's Blade versus a Doran's and a Longsword. So definitely Nintendo Dax has the advantage in terms of items, but he's just playing it kind of safe right now. Looking forward to his time to do some work. And that was a decent amount of trade, but it was pretty much even. Oriana on the run here as Super Chris comes in for the gank. No success, though. Didn't even get any damage off onto them. So I'm going to take a look back top. Once again, there's not many uh, people down bottom just yet. They are kind of getting back to the lane after buying a few items. In fact, what did... Uh, let's take a look here at what items were bought. And I didn't actually switch this up, did I? Let's go ahead and do that while we still have a chance. Okie dokie. So I'm just going to take some time to move these supports into place. And there we go. I think we're all matched up and good to go. Even though this one's kind of weird. This one needs to be fixed. Bam. There we go. Now we're fixed up. You guys can kind of match those up on your own and check the item comparisons. Scuba Crips coming around here. I think he's trying to find Oriana. Either that or he's just going to be looking for some jungle stills. Closing the case now. Just barely juking out of that. That was a great job. But he does use the ward to his advantage to get the slow off on the closing the case. Not going to be able to do enough damage to take her down. But he does get her health very low. So that's going to force her back. Aerodactyl picking up a kill on top. I actually want to look at that. So let's jump back a few seconds and see what exactly happens. They go full on engage. Aerodactyl doing quite a bit of damage. Taking him down into fluffy form, I want to say. There's the beautify. Ignite coming in. Flash goes down. And there it is. There was the Q. Big damage from that Q, actually. In order to finish him off, that was a lot more damage than he was expecting to see. Aerodactyl actually not even really feeling the pressure from that at all. Q missing. Scuba Chris going to have to jump in there and just uh, kind of hold the lane down. And in fact, I don't think he was expecting closing the case to hang around. There's ultimate from Oriana. Is that going to be enough to take him down? Scuba Chris falls just about able to kill closing the case, but he barely lives there. Oriana's shield holds him up, and that was very close. Meanwhile, Dragon being taken by Nessus. And let's actually, man, there's so much action happening at the same time. Can't even catch it all at once. So during that Dragon fight there, we actually had some fight on the bottom lane. Itakio taking lots of pressure, and he's not going to get out of that one. If he can pop that ultimate, I think that's what killed him. Actually, he goes for the Janna. Oh my god, and the snipe! Marjanis, he taking him down with the final laser, whatever the hell they named it. <laughs> uh, what did they change the name to, man? Uh, it used to be Finale Spunkin. I always, always think of the old... Final Spark, there you go. Uh, I'm still old school. Still think of the German word for it or whatever they used. Definitely good that they changed it. This is kind of weird to say in the first place, but whatever. Final Spark. Very anime-like. So far, the game is looking in the favor of Blue Team here with a 2k gold advantage, especially after having that dragon. It is Mardana, is he going to go down here? He's just constantly slowed. He cannot get away, but there's the shield. Still not enough to save him. Closing the case, picks up the kill, and makes it out. And Scooby Crisp not even able to chase that down. That's unfortunate. Blue Team really starting to pull out an advantage in terms of kills here. They don't really have any uh, disadvantage in terms of towers. Everyone is very even on this one so far. Normally, at uh, you know around this time, we would we would start to see some towers falling. Let's take a look at the health. They're actually very, uh, very solid right now. Very healthy towers. In fact, uh, yeah, nothing really even close to half as far as I can tell. So both teams doing a very good job of defending the turrets. Most of the lead just comes from uh, kills and gold and farm and all that stuff. So here we go, three people down bottom. Nasa's coming in, trying to get the slow on the Dark Zephyr. Flash coming down. I think he might be able to escape if he can get out of the range of that ultimate. Did a lot of damage, wasn't able to pick him up, but that was very close. Jicker with a nice gank. That is going to put enough pressure on them to uh, have the advantage in the next fight if they decide to actually push back out too much. Jicker being forced to not go backwards. Nice job on that Q there. Uh, you know, losing a little bit of time on his ability to jungle further. Itakio taking a hit from a final spark. Mar Dynasty trying to put some pressure in, but I don't think that was really... Uh, very useful for them. They weren't able to capitalize on that. But either way, he's going to head back to his lane. Let's see if they can get some more farm here. Scuba Chris wants to help him push this lane down as much as possible. They want to get this turret once they get that mid turret down. That does open up a lot of pressure for the rest of the map. Lots of advantages for the jungler to come around behind and do some ganks as well as other things like that. So far, pretty exciting game. It's been a while since I've done these these lead commentaries, but I, uh, I definitely do enjoy watching these high-level people do their work. It's very exciting indeed. Scuba Chris just barely skating past Aerodactyl. I don't even think he saw him. I, 
can't really tell. I don't think he had enough vision range for that. Just using the ward to jump back over the wall and teleport back safely. I don't know if that was necessary, but he's going to use that to his advantage just to make sure he doesn't want to take any chances here. PJ is God. Oh boy. Just taking a look at these guys' names. I don't know some of these guys in here. Just Scuba Chris. Aerodactyl destroyed red turret up top. So that's the first turret down going to blue team there. And that's very interesting to see Lulu with such an advantage in the top lane. Always has been a really annoying person to play against. Spear of the Elder Lizard, that's going to give her that extra damage on the Ooh, ouch. Let's take a look at what I just missed there. That was probably a full burst to dead. Closing the case here, coming up. One thing about Oriana, you gotta use that auto attack to try and add in a lot of extra damage. A lot of people don't know the advantages of that. And there we go, all of the bursts coming in. That was a perfect job using his ultimate. Uh, Oriana ultimate generally is kind of hard to hit, but if you can land that quickly, then you're gonna be doing some very destructive stuff to your enemies. Scuba Chris was doing his best to do some damage in there. Wasn't really able to trade too much, but he is going to defend the turret for now. Let's see if he can actually do this safely. He's playing it very close to the back. I don't know if he realized that the ultimate was down or not. Either way, even without it, she's very strong. And now she has to run away with Aerodactyl coming in from behind. Is he going to be able to make his escape? He does kick her away, but there's a lot of speed. They have both of that. Oh, there's a teleport coming in, in fact. But he jumps away. He's like, no, nope, screw that. I'm not going to help you out with that. I think that Super Nintendo X might actually be able to get that kill, but no, the ultimate comes down. Aerodactyl saving his life there. And meanwhile, we have a kill down bottom onto, uh, I think it was Janna died here. Looks like Itakio getting very low. Ignite going down, so that's going to be off. And there's ultimate. Boom, just not enough damage to finish it off, though. She gets away, but there's the Q. Dodo 8 picking up Janna kill, like I said. All right. Very close. Itakio could have almost fallen there. That would have been two kills for bottom lane. You can see Red is doing quite a job. I mean, early on, Misfortune was uh, putting on some good pressure, but Dodo 8 seems to be coming back and doing fairly well from what I can tell so far. Pretty even, though, as far as you can tell on the kills. And oh my god, this poor Mar Dynasty is just having so much trouble. He wasn't even able to finish his ultimate up. I wonder if that ruined his cooldown, in fact. Let's go ahead and take a look. Yeah, it actually ruined his cooldown. Didn't even use the ability. I really hate it when that happens. So down goes his final spark, and Aerodactyl just, just being a complete terror on the game right now. Uh, destroyed his top lane, now came destroyed middle, closing the case like, man, I was doing fine enough on my own, but thanks, bro. Scuba Chris going really low here. I think his shield's going to save him just enough. Yeah, that shield barely helped him stay alive in that case. I think that Ignite definitely would have taken him down if he didn't have that shield ready. So blue team really starting to pull ahead here. That gold lead is definitely becoming evident. 5k ahead is a pretty big number, especially at 16 minutes into the game. Dark Zephyr doing his best to kind of hang in there, but he's going to start taking lots of pressure if he doesn't get some help. There's the three-man gank. He's going down. There's no way he can get away from that. Lots of slows coming in. And there we go. Jakur was able to hold off the pressure of the turret so that they remain extremely healthy on the bottom. They can continue to push here without going back. 2 dead X wants to get this turret down. He's doing his best to push this down. Aerodactyl a little bit low on health, but he's still strong enough. I'm guessing he's going to have his ultimate is ready. Yep, definitely is ready. Here's some action. Scooby Chris wants to get a kill on closing the case. He is sticking to him like glue, but is it going to be enough? Lots of damage coming in. That burst, he just cannot handle it. And down he goes, closing the case, able to make it away before Mar Dynasty is able to bind him up. This dragon will be ready soon. They're pinging it. They're ready for it to respawn. They have the timer. There's the pink ward. And so they're able to see that this is being done. Super Nintendo Dude X going in, but he is not prepared to watch for that ultimate. I don't know what he was thinking. She was obviously way stronger than him. And that was just a free kill almost. She's getting extremely powerful right now. Let's look at that. Three kills already. Well, let's take a look at what items he had. Um, I don't know. I don't know why he decided to go for that. It didn't seem like he had the advantage from my point of view. But then again, I haven't really played that character. I don't know what he's expecting. Nice job on the tornado hitting both. She's going to try and stay alive as long as possible, trying to bait that in, but I think she's still going to fall. Oh, no, that was a great flash, actually, putting her into safety. Dodo 8 going to try and flash over the wall. She occurs slow, not going to matter for now. But here comes Miss Fortune using that speed buff of her own passive to make up the distance. That was a kill. And now can Dark Zephyr flash over the wall and make his escape? I think he's going to be good for now. He is in a safe position. Double kill for Miss Fortune. She's becoming very strong. And there's the triple kill. Picking up the 432 gold. That extra gold from shutting down uh, Miss Fortune goes to...
the Lux, and she definitely needed that gold for sure. Closing the case shutdown. There's shutdowns all across the game here. Both teams picking up kills, and Jakur now on the run. I don't think he can escape. There's the slow, and he's trying to get the 2 to X to back off. Can he actually make it out of there? I thought he was definitely going to die after the slow from Sona, but uh, he was able to... Oh, there we go. He got hit by the trap. He was not expecting to run into that. That is unfortunate. Down he goes. Eric Daxel coming in. She's definitely going to pick this kill up. There's no way Sona can get away from that one, but I think the 2 to X might have a chance here. Wow, I was wrong. That was... That was very, <laughs> that was rough. This is a beast mode Lulu. This is not something you see every day. Lulu generally being played as a sport. Now kind of being the carry this game. That is very rough and that's not fun to be on the receiving end of that kind of pressure. TJ has got coming up to support the middle lane here. They still haven't lost this turret and uh, she's gonna be removing that trap by stepping on top of it, no problem there. Scooby Chris going to come around looking for a chance to steal the blue buff. He's like, well, I guess it's already gone. He obviously does not have vision of that, so he can only expect that it's already been taken, even though it is currently being grabbed right now by Oriana. Things are starting to heat up here as the game is moving into mid, and it's going to be pretty much uh, fight or die time. I think that Red Team really needs to hold these guys off and pull it into late game if they want to have a chance. Because if the game keeps going currently at this pace, they are going to be losing shortly. But all it takes is one or two hiccups from blue team now that we're getting into team fight phase. And they could come back potentially. But right now they are all very low. They're definitely going to lose this mid turret. Everybody needs to heal right now. That was a great ultimate for Misfortune. Hitting pretty much all four of them and forcing them all to go back. And I think they might actually lose their inhibitor here. Oh no, Dark Zephyr getting stopped from back. And that's going to be even more time lost on trying to get back. So she's not going to be able to help this out. I'm trying to figure out, is Blue Team going to be able to win this fight after they are fully ready to go? There's the ultimate. Just barely breaks through the shield. Not doing any real damage to their health. There goes the inhibitor, and that's going to put Blue Team at a pretty large advantage in terms of map control. Red Team going to have to deal with those super creeps in the mid lane now. Scuba Chris taking lots of damage, not even able to trade anything. So that was just free health lost in favor of Blue Team. They are going to be backing off now, looking for other points on the map to take advantage of. This blue buff is up. They can steal that easily right now. And there's nothing that Red can do to stop them. They are probably going to be taking this this next turret while Aerodactyl is pushing top lane. And she could be going down here. This is a 2v1 situation. But will she get a kill? She does. Aerodactyl taking one. That's going to be a fair trade. And by trade, I mean she actually gets away with it. Holy crap. This beast mode Lulu just completely destroying these guys. I mean, she's got to be the MVP. Or at least everything exciting that I've seen this game has definitely been uh, at least somewhat a cause of this crazy Lulu play. So 21 minutes in, red team really in a bad spot. 10,000 gold behind, already lost their middle inhibitor, and blue is just running freely, running around happy at how strong they are. Closing the case, won his lane pretty strong, and uh, Lulu, you know, while she had a little bit of trouble early game, and by trouble, I mean a little bit of pressure, but really wasn't too much of an issue as she came back really, really strong there. Haven't seen too much exciting stuff after that initial attempted gank from Nintendo X, which failed miserably since he just straight up died. He's going to be running away there. That speed buff from going into bird form is insane, but even with that, once you get Nasus on you, that slow is ridiculous, and oh, what the heck is going on? Oh, <laughs> they surrendered. I was like, I can't move my map. So anyways, guys, that is, uh, that is the game victory for the blue team. Hopefully you guys can excuse my rustiness from this commentary, and you still enjoy what I'm doing. So if you do, hit that like button, subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you guys around for the next one. This is Colby Cheese. Peace out.